God that's depicted in this book certainly, 100%, does not exist. It's a question of, of certainty. For example, if I said, do you believe in the existence of a married bachelor? You would say, well, not only does a married bachelor not exist, it cannot exist by definition or a square circle. If you tell me that the God of the Bible is a married bachelor, I will say he does not exist. And that's how we can know that there are mutually incompatible properties and characteristics of the God that's in this book that rule out the possibility of his existence. For example, in Malachi 3.6, God said, I am the Lord, I change not. And yet all through the Bible we see God changing his mind. In Ezekiel 32.14, the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. He does not exist. It's like a married bachelor. In Exodus 25, God said, I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. The God of the Bible punishes people for their parents' sin. However, in Ezekiel 18.20, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. In Deuteronomy 24.16, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. The God of the Bible punishes children for their parents' sin. The God of the Bible does not punish children for their parents' sin. He does not exist. In Psalm 145.9, the Lord is good to all. Deuteronomy 32, He's a God of truth and without iniquity. However, Isaiah 45.7, God said, I make peace and create evil. Bara ra in the Hebrew. I, the Lord, do all these things. Lamentations 3, Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good, Jeremiah 18, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you. Ezekiel 20, 25, I gave them statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. The God of the Bible is good. The God of the Bible is not good. He does not exist. Does God tempt people? James 1.13 said, Let no man say, I am tempted of God. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. However, Genesis 22.1, it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. God does not tempt people. God does tempt people. He does not exist. In Exodus 20.13, in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. In Leviticus 24.17, a different phrasing of it with a different Hebrew word, he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. However, we find in Exodus 32, Thus saith the Lord of God, Put every man his sword by his side, slay every man his brother, his companion and neighbor. First Samuel 6, The people lamented because the Lord had smitten many of the people with a great slaughter. The Bible is filled with examples of the biblical God committing, commanding, and condoning killing. The God of the Bible says, Don't kill. The God of the Bible says, Kill. He does not exist. Should we own slaves? Leviticus 25 says yes. The Bible is a pro-slavery book of the children of the strangers that sojourn among you. You shall buy them and they shall be your possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. You find all sorts of pro-slavery books in the Bible. You can sell your sons and daughters into the hand of the children and so on. Even Jesus said that some slaves you ought not to beat as hard as other slaves. He was that compassionate. And slaves obey in all things your masters, it says in Colossians. However, Isaiah said, undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free, break every yoke. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. The God of the Bible is pro-slavery, the God of the Bible is anti-slavery. He does not exist.